today through the word found in Nehemiah 3 through 1 through 4, let us be able to rebuild our own walls. And with this word, we will begin our February 15, 2023 Men's and Women's Ministry Commencement Service. After 70 years, Southern Judah was finally able to return to their homeland after 70 years of captivity in Babylon. And these returns happened in three stages. The first return was led by Zerubbabel. And in this return, which was the first return, the leader Zerubbabel began the re reconstruction of the temple. And this temple was named after the leader of this return, which was Zerubbabel's temple. And who was the leader of the second return? It was the priest and scribe, Ezra. Through Ezra, the law was preached and it began the reconstruction of faith for the building of the temple. And this all began with the preaching of the law first. And Ezra led this reconstruction with their hearts being constructed as well. And who was the leader of the third return? It is Nehemiah. Nehemiah was the governor over the Israelites at this time. And he reconstructed the temple wall and also reiterated the law. And along with the reconstruction of the temple wall, Nehemiah also built up the people's wall of faith that was needed to carry out this great task. So before they reconstructed the temple wall, Nehemiah also preached the law. So what does Nehemiah's third return and the rebuilding of the wall show us today. It shows us we must also rebuild the fortress of the temples of our hearts, which can be destroyed by Satan. So we always have to protect our hearts so that we can live a beautiful life in front of God. While we live in this world, although we believe in God and think of the church, there are many times when we commit sins, even though we know we shouldn't have committed them. And every time this happens, the temple walls of our hearts collapse. How many times a day are the walls constructed and then destroyed? It is these walls that are needed to protect our hearts. Therefore, if that wall is rebuilt, our temple wall, we can prevent our own destruction from sin. So we diligently build up our wall. So how do we keep it from being destroyed? We have to build it up with strong walls. The Bible also emphasizes the importance of the city wall. And this city wall surrounds not only the physical temple, but the temple of our hearts. Isaiah 26, verse 1. We have a strong city. He sets up walls and ramparts for security. So
So even in the outer part of our walls, there is another wall, a strong city wall, to protect the walls of our temples. And in Isaiah 62, verse 6, the Bible says, On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen. All day and all night, they will never keep silent. So where were the watchmen led to? They were led to the walls. They were on the walls, not the temple, to guard. So that each individual would not be destroyed. And God wants our hearts guarded like this. And in Proverbs 25, 28, it says, Like a city that is broken into, and without walls is a man who has no control over his spirit. So if we cannot control ourselves, it is because we are without walls. When we have walls constructed, then there is control over our spirit. Dear Saints, today's Wednesday night service is being held as the commencement service for the 2023 Men's and Women's Commencement Ministry service. I believe that many of you came out with sincere prayers for tonight's service and through today's worship. May our temples and our walls of our hearts be rebuilt and rebuilt firmly. And may you become perfect temples that never collapse from any attack that may confront you. May you be the sturdy temples of God. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Since this is so, how should the rebuilding of our wall take place to protect the temple of our hearts. With this commencement service, let us learn how we could rebuild our temple wall. And why should we do this? So that our hearts will not collapse again with sin. Number one, We must first build and consecrate our own sheep gate. In our scripture reading, verse 1, it says, Then Eliashib, the high priest, arose with his brothers, the priests, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its doors. They consecrated the wall to the Tower of the Hundred and the Tower of Hananel. So like this, Nehemiah, Nehemiah ordered the building of the Sheep Gate first. But not only did Nehemiah instruct the people to prioritize the building of the sheep gate, but he also instructed them to consecrate it. So the sheep gate was not only rebuilt, but made holy, consecrated. Here, the word consecrate in Hebrew is kadesh. It means to be holy, to separate, and to dedicate as holy. So then, what kind of gate is the sheep gate? It's a holy gate. 
So the sheep gate was the gate through which the sheep pass. And it refers to the gate used when sacrifices like sheep pass through it. And then it went to the sacrificial area as an offering to God. So now you know why this gate was built first and consecrated. So it was built gate first among the wall to be consecrated and dedicated to God. After this was constructed, then the wall could be constructed. And we must know the same is true for the construction of our walls. The spiritual sheep gate for worshiping God must also be rebuilt first and consecrated. After this, then our walls of our hearts can be constructed. If we look at the Ten Commandments of God, we know that they are divided into five commandments regarding how to treat God, and the other five commandments refer how we should treat fellow man. So the, the commandments, numbers one through five, pertain to God and commandments 6 through 10 tell us of how we should treat our fellow neighbors. So when you look at all 10 commandments, they are commandments that teach us how to live. And Jesus also taught the Lord's Prayer. And the prayer is also divided up as to how we are to treat God, and then also how we should treat our fellow man. So first, we learn how God should be treated, and then how our fellow man should be treated. And Jesus also spoke of the commandments, and the greatest commandment of all was to love God, that was the greatest commandment. And then the second was to love our neighbor as ourself. And these two great commandments are also contained in the Ten Commandments. So our life of faith must also consist of these two main commands. First, we must know the law regarding how to treat God. And then we should learn the law of how to treat people. And the function of our life with God is to worship. And worship, as we know, is a time to focus on our relationship with God. It is a time to straighten out our relationship with God. So in true worship, we only see God. Therefore, we can never be truly spiritual if we do not worship. And during worship service, the pastor on the pulpit, the representative prayer leader, and the praise leader are all assistants in worship service. And they must focus only on the relationship that they have with God. And this focus must be throughout the entire worship service.
so you cannot focus on people, but only on God. So as we begin our men's and women's group ministry service, may we passionately love and value God in this worship. Because in worship, no matter how you feel or how hard your life is, we must focus on the most important aspect of our lives, no matter how difficult it is. And that important aspect is our life of worship, our one-on-one -on -one meeting with God. Please believe this. Currently, our church has three official services. We have Lord's Day service, Wednesday night service, and Saturday dawn prayer service. And I sincerely hope that all members, including the board members of our men's and women's ministry, yearn to attend all three worship services, that they will passionately and actively participate in all the worship services to God. So through worship, we can fulfill all the commandments to love our neighbors and God. And through worship, God will open up all the doors of opportunity and resolve all the problems in our lives. So let us live in this right way. Let us live in this right order and the way of the church. If you want to receive blessings, then worship God. Dear saints, may we first rebuild our own sheep gate. Then may we consecrate it. And like the sheep gate, may we be separate and holy to God so that Satan can never make us fall again. So that the temple of our hearts will become as strong as the temple in Zion. And how do we do this? Rebuild our sheep gate. So restore our worship to God. Strongly yearn, yearn for God. And in that moment, God will enter the temple of our hearts and give us miracles in our lives. And number two, How must we rebuild our temple walls? Number two, our purpose and goal must be clear. As we commence our ministries tonight, let us have a clear purpose and goal. Although the words purpose and goal seem similar, they have distinct different meanings. What is purpose? Purpose is the direction we pursue in life. Then what is the goal? A goal is a specific target that we need to achieve. So in our lives, we have many purposes. But in our lives of faith, what is our purpose? Is it to go to church? Is it to worship? That's not purpose. Our purpose is to glorify God. So what would our goal be? Our goal to glorify God would be to come to church on time, to praise Him and worship well. That's our goal in order to glorify God. 
in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it speaks of this goal and purpose. Whether then you eat or drink or whatever you do, all to the glory of God. So the goal is whatever you do, do it for the purpose to glorify God. So in order to give glory to God, whatever you do, eat, drink, work in the world, go to school, drive, do it to glorify God. So what is the second thing we must consider in rebuilding our walls? So it is the wall must be rebuilt with a clear purpose and goal. And in that way, we will be able to complete our temple walls. It will not stop. So the beginning is to construct the sheep gate. And as we continue with the clear purpose and goal, we will build up our walls of our temples. So what are the consequences if you lose your purpose and goal? This can be explained through the story of the hare and the tortoise. So the hare and the tortoise ran a race. Who won? Do you not know? The tortoise won. I, I think you don't know the story of the hare and the tortoise, so I will explain. So hares are rabbits and they run fast, and tortoises, turtles, are slow. So as soon as they set off, the hare darted forward, and it outpaced the tortoise. So seeing the tortoise slowly walking from afar, the hare lay down under a tree and rested. Then the hare fell asleep and the tortoise overtook the hare. In the end, the hare woke up, and although he ran fast, in the end, the tortoise crossed the finish line, and the tortoise won. Why did that hare, that rabbit, lose the race in this fairy tale? It's not because he couldn't run. It wasn't because he was lazy, but it's because the hare didn't look at his goal with a clear purpose. Instead, he fixated on his opponent, the tortoise, and that's why he lost. He didn't look at the goal, which was to cross the finish line first, for the purpose of winning. But on the contrary, he focused on the wrong thing, the wrong goal. And why did the tortoise win? Because the tortoise had the right goal and he had the right purpose in mind. If that tortoise only looked at his opponent, the hare, and how fast he ran, the tortoise might have given up the race at once, but the tortoise won because it did not look at the hare, but only looked at the purpose and goal. And this was the finish line. And this is the same for our faith. We all may seem like turtles and we may not be able to be fast in anything. But in order to win, don't look at your opponent. Don't look at other people. Just look at your own goal, your own clear purpose, and focus on it. And then you will win in the end. Please believe this.
So let us look back at the days of Nehemiah. What was the reason why the reconstruction of the wall was completed in 52 days, despite all the attacks and all the enemies that they faced? 52 days is a very short time if you consider building a temple wall. But they completed it in this time, even though people even threatened to kill them. So they were able to rebuild the city wall so quickly because they had a clear purpose. And this purpose was to never let shame befall the temple of God again. And they kept this clear purpose in the center of their hearts. So even if people offended them, but threatened them, they were scared, but they did not stop rebuilding the wall. And it wasn't just one or two enemies. It was many enemies, but their purpose was not to finish quickly. Their purpose was to never let shame come upon God or his temple again. Let us all find Nehemiah 2, 17. And we will see the specific goal and clear purpose they had. Nehemiah 2, 17. Let us all read it together. Ready, begin. Then I said to them, You see the bad situation we are in, that Jerusalem is desolate and its gates burned by fire. Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer be a reproach. So in their hearts, they didn't want to bring what? They didn't want to bring shame, reproach to God anymore. So their clear purpose was to rebuild the wall. And they risked their lives to build this wall. In our lives of faith, in our lives at church, it is the same. When we go to church, when we worship, when we pray, when we study, when we evangelize, we must be one, have one purpose, one goal, so that we will not bring shame to God, that Satan will not try to destroy us again. In the temple of our hearts, when Satan is attacking us, when we are not able to stand, what is the point of the church if it will all come to destruction? The church has no purpose if Satan destroys us. So Nehemiah, he risks his life brought the people together, and he achieved the goal with that clear purpose that they will not shame God again. And a beautiful story arose from this. So what were the goals of this purpose, and how were they achieved? Number one, despite the fact that the nobles of Tekoa did not participate, the people of Tekoa repaired their part. And this is found in Nehemiah 3, 5. It says, Moreover, next to him, the Tekoites made repairs, but their nobles did not support the work of their masters. So the nobles did not help, but the people below them they helped repair the wall. 
So there is no mention that the people complained because the purpose and goal were clear. They devoted themselves to rebuilding the wall without complaining about the others who did not help. Because if you complain, then your faith goes low. And so does your desire to help. So these people did not look to other people. They only looked to the clear purpose and goal of rebuilding. They knew this was God's house and they did not want to be part of its destruction again. And number two, Hanun and the inhabitants of Zanoa successfully repaired the valley gate. This is found in Nehemiah 3, 13. Hanan and the inhabitants of Zanoa repaired the valley gate. They built it and hung its doors with its bolts and its bars and a thousand cubits of the wall to the refuse gate. So how hard it must have been to repair this door in the sunken valley that it was built upon. And so this area was not easy to build upon. It was the part where no one else wanted. It was the hardest place in order to construct. But there's also no word of complaint here either. And number three, Malkijah, the son of Rechab, did an excellent job of repairing the refuse gate. This is found in Nehemiah, 3.14 And Malkishah, the son of Rechab, the official of the district of Beth Hakurim, repaired the refuse gate. He built it and hung its doors with its bolts and its bars. So why is this part important? Because it's the refuse gate. It is the gate in which it must be closed so all that filth, all that waste, human excrement could be shut out. So how much did this place smell and how dirty was it? But no one complained here either of doing this job. Number four, Hanan, the sixth son of Salaf, also repaired a section by faith. Nehemiah 3.30 After him, Hananiah, the son of Shelemiah, and Hanan, the sixth son of Salaf, repaired another section. After him, Mashalam, the son of Pachariah, carried out repairs in front of his own quarters. So it seems that he was given an easy place to repair. But why does it seem so important to record this verse? It is because Hanan was the sixth son. But there is no mention of the first through five brothers. This means they didn't help, but the sixth son, Hanan, the youngest one, he helped. Yet, he did not complain, even though his older brothers were not there to assist. So he didn't complain, and he didn't look at others, but he only wanted to repair the temple, to be a part in glorifying God. 
and he kept this goal and purpose clear. At this time, during our 2023 Men's and Women's Group Commencement Worship, do you have a clear purpose and clear goal in your life of faith? So with this worship, may we run to the goal with a clear purpose. And this clear purpose is only one. With all our talents, our thoughts, our actions, even though we may all have different styles of life, of different characteristics, our clear purpose is just one. And it is to only glorify God, to only glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. And with this purpose, may you never be bothered by others' words and actions. And what will happen? Then you will never be tied down. You will never feel bothered. Your situations and circumstances won't bother you anymore. As you have lived your life this far, if you presently find your heart tied to worldly things, to people, to material things, or to things of this world, let us take the sword of God the sword of the word that only glorifies God and cut off all these ties and be finally freed from them. If our faith stands straight, then we can take off all these distractions of the world. So for the rest of this year, may you be strong, and sturdily rebuild your walls of worship, walls of the word, and walls of prayer. May they be strong, and may Satan never invade your temple again. And may you never fall from the same attacks and deceits of the world. I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Father God, overflowing with love and grace, In this 2023 Men's and Women's Commencement Worship Service, we know that one and a half month has already passed, but we truly want to begin this ministry with one purpose and with one goal, which is to glorify your name, and we are thankful for this. And although in the past we had our own individual goals, our own individual purposes. Father God, may you be our only purpose, our only goal. May we only follow your will and may the temples of our hearts be constructed so Satan cannot attack us nor destroy us, but may we be strengthened in this one purpose together as we wish to glorify your holy name. May all the men's and women's group members and board members, may you pour upon them your Holy Spirit, your holy abilities and your holy will. And may they be firm in their commitment to live according to your will. And may we never again be bothered or shaken by the attacks of Satan in our lives. May we have the strong wall, the sheep gate constructed in our lives. May it happen tonight. And may we only live in the hope of your word and produce beautiful fruit for you. We believe in this and we pray in the loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give glory to God.